While Final Fantasy VII Remake turned out to not actually be a remake, Crisis Core has received what we might as well consider to be one, despite Square's marketing saying remaster, and Tetsuya Nomura describing in interviews that, relatably, the dev team was as unsure how to categorize the game themselves. In this video, we'll cover the differences among the PSP version, both in Japanese and outside of Japan, and of Crisis Core Reunion in all of the platforms it's available on. Thank you to Square for providing me with a code for the Xbox version. Meanwhile, I paid for the other versions myself, and my friend Phil provided the PS5 footage shown in this video. A few minor changes were made to Crisis Core upon its international release. Most notable is the new Hard Mode difficulty option, which increases enemy stats substantially. Some mission maps in the international version have more inaccessible areas, so you wouldn't waste as much time looking around for loot. Also, when you die in missions, before you would be sent back to the title screen, but in the international version you'd be sent back to your save points as if you had just aborted the mission. Additionally, the camera outside of battles is now lower and angled higher to give you a further view out. Visually, outside of Japan, the Statue of Minerva was altered to not so closely resemble the Virgin Mary, save points were changed from safe text to the soldier symbol, and various background sides had their capitalization and spelling corrected. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion is an Unreal 4 remaster that builds off of seven remakes assets. At its core, it is still a handheld game. The general game design, philosophy of level design, gameplay loop, and the quality of most cutscenes showed this is still a PSP game at its heart. It's pretty clear when you snap from the can animations of the PSP to the new battle animations. Though that being said, a lot of the cutscene animations do still hold up pretty well, so kudos to those experiences impressive cutscene animations. The script only had minor rewrites, mostly for the sake of dialogue that wasn't voiced before, to sound better when said out loud. There is no new content or rewrites for the sake of updated continuity. Story-wise, there is nothing in Crisis Core Reunion that connects it more to 7 Remake than the original Crisis Core already did. Though, some visual changes, as we'll see, do connect it more. In the original game, you more so issued commands to Zack, including your most basic sword attack, from the bar at the bottom of the screen, with minor direct controls in the form of movement, teching when knocked down, blocking, and dodging to cancel commands, all of which used AP. But now in Reunion, you have much more direct control over Zack. You have a basic sword attack combo at all times with quick access to your materia, and then the bar at the bottom is reserved for items. The original also had no manual camera control at all in battles, but now you can control the camera freely and lock on with the right analog stick. The original Crisis Core was a slower-paced experience. You don't attack that fast and most of your attacks will stagger enemies. Likewise, enemies don't attack you as fast either and can in turn interrupt you consistently when they do. In Reunion, the pacing of combat is so fast thanks to having direct control of Zack. You attack a lot faster and to compensate for how often you're attacking, you can't stagger enemies as easily. Exploiting weaknesses will still stagger more often, but it's not as frequent as before. However, while enemies are in turn significantly more aggressive, they still have an easy time stagger staggering you, but you have a few new ways to combat this. Action Materia attacks are now stronger if done following up basic attacks, so while the game can be played with a hit and run style, you can also be rewarded for staying in the enemy's face for a little bit. Additionally, when casting magic from your combo, Zack will take a good step back to cast. When bosses in the original cast big attacks, you couldn't interrupt them at all. In Reunion, these attacks will have a cast time and a meter that pops up that if you do enough damage to deplete it before before the attack is cast, you'll successfully cancel it. Some of the other balance changes include the Super Boss Minerva's hard mode HP was raised from 20 million to 77 million, the Elemental Blade commands now use AP instead of MP, and Costly Punch now consumes 15.6% of your current HP rather than only 1.6%, which is a fair trade for how powerful it can still be. There's also the new combat evaluation mechanic upon becoming first class. Depending on how you you or what you used in battle, you'll recover HP, MP, and or AP. Regarding the DMW, it's significantly less intrusive compared to its original counterpart. Modulating phases, limit verges, and still image memories no longer interrupt gameplay. Limit breaks are now manually activated when you want to use them instead of triggering automatically, character and summon limit breaks are stocked separately, character limit breaks can now be skipped, you can see how long your buffs will last for as well as debuffs, and the reels will 
you'll always complete when the battle ends so you will never miss on at least one roll per battle. Upon receiving the Buster Sword, Zack unlocks an enhanced block where blocking now reduces incoming damage by 80%, Necrosmos where Zack recovers a little AP and MP upon defeating foes, and Battle Stance. Going into Battle Stance costs AP, but while in Battle Stance you cannot be staggered as you're always blocking, your basic combo is replaced by a strong attack, and action materia receive their bonus damage when used from battle stance. Zack has a Buster Sword proficiency score that raises by utilizing battle stance. At 23%, you break the damage cap, and at 47%, you'll ignore enemy barriers. Missions can now be sorted and filtered, and not just by which ones you haven't done yet, but also by which ones you haven't gotten the loot from yet either. Additionally, their difficulty is now ranked by stars, you can see all the completion rewards, and missions have individual rewards for completion and some of those rewards were previously treasure chests in their respective mission. When on a mission, you'll also now see how many treasure chests are left. There are now autosaves, the placement of many chests were rearranged and some loot and enemy drops were tweaked all throughout, save points now heal you, quest markers and side quest markers were added, new mail was added that explains where to obtain some key items and provides sample materia fusion recipes, Libra now displays HP higher than 99,999, Elemental weaknesses are always shown. Difficulty can be changed whenever outside of combat. Statuses like poison go away after a battle. The safe spots in Chapter 5 stealth minigame are highlighted. And there is an indicator as to how long it'll take you to flee from battle, along with a visible border for battles. You can now dash with R2 or L3 outside of combat, skip cutscenes. Upon game over, retry a fight with the option to edit your equipment rather than returning to your last save or save point. Quick Quickly heal yourself outside a battle, and fuse equipped materia without unequipping it first. You can also still avoid battles by running forward against walls. Crisis Core Reunion utilizes 7 remakes models and assets for characters, summons, enemies, items, weapons, and environments. It also sports updated level geometry, lighting, and shaders. Notably, some details are held back in Reunion for probably either processing power or to better match the original character rigs, such as hair. The FMVs done by Visual Works were AI upscaled, though they were updated with the remake's Buster Sword model. Meanwhile, the in-game FMVs were redone. Some in FMVs were also totally redone from scratch, and the quality difference shows. They're also much shorter than before. The UI was also entirely redone to be consistent with 7 Remakes UI. This comes with clearer information for the player as well as revamped tutorial boxes. For performance and quality on all platforms, there's dynamic resolution scaling and minor artifacting from the anti-aliasing technique though I only really caught this at 1080p. Additionally, the 30fps platforms do have differing degrees of minor frame pacing issues, though some people may be hard pressed to notice without testing it, so take what you will from that. Being next to 60fps footage though doesn't help much either. So Crisis Core Reunion on PS5 and Xbox Series X runs at 1440p to 2160p at 60fps, though it stays at 4K a majority of the time. On PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, it runs at 4K 30 when standing still and as low as 1512p when moving. On Xbox Series S, it runs at a solid consistent 1080p 60. On PS4, Xbox One S, and Xbox One, it runs 1080p 30. Lastly, on Nintendo Switch, the game runs from 576 to 720p at 30 FPS while docked and 432 to 720p at 30fps when undocked, with a number of considerable optimizations made for the hardware. The PC version goes up to 120fps and doesn't have arbitrary resolution support, though the game is flawless widescreen compatible. The PC port also supports hot plugging and different platform buttons. The Steam Deck will not maintain 60fps at native resolution with any settings, though you can maintain 30 or even 40fps at high, and you'll get from 2 to 4 hours depending on your settings and what's going on. Additionally, the frame pacing and anti-aliasing issues are negligible on the Steam Deck screen. There's also a lot of loading into zones in this game, especially if you're grinding missions, but thankfully the time difference between platforms isn't significant at all. The voice acting was redone in both English and Japanese so that all dialogue, minor or major, could be voiced, including all NPCs. Some characters like Genesis did not need re-recording in Japanese though, since 
since all of Genesis' dialogue was already voiced. But for the English dub, this means the game features the Seven Remake cast, so let's compare the end result. While I like to make these videos as compact as possible, I don't think it'd be fair to only present the cutscenes in small samples, so if you want to see the full cutscenes back to back, visit the video in the top right. I've recommended you for first. <laughs> Oh, and Jill! I love you, man! And Jill! Uh. Don't make me regret this, Zack. Sir. I've recommended you for first. <laughs> and Jill! Oh, I love you, man! And Jill! Don't make me regret this, Zack. Sir. The other areas. Make cars just crawling with nasties. Soldiers having difficulties. The other areas. Midgar's just crawling with nasties. Soldiers having difficulties. We used to sneak in there for fun. When the seconds were out. Genesis. And Jill. And I. We used to sneak in there for fun. When the seconds were out. Genesis. And Jill. And I. What the hell did you do, Angeal? <clears throat> Is that your idea of honor? What the hell did you do, Angeal? Is that... Is that your idea of honor? The soundtrack was rearranged by Takaharu Ishimoto, who had worked on the original game's soundtrack as well. Here's a quick listen. Crisis Core Reunion's intent is to make the game accessible to folks as it'll be an important refresher on events regarding Zack going into the second game of the remake trilogy, while also offering a far more digestible gameplay experience by improving the pacing substantially and incorporating influence from Seven Remake. The voice cast and the possibly the music too could be points of contention for folks, and while mods can address those things, it is of course an imperfect solution. So feel free to share your thoughts in the comments and how you feel about the voice acting, music, and gameplay changes made. And that'll wrap it up for this video, so feel free to share your thoughts below, leave a like, and if you want to support the channel, you can find me on Patreon. I'll be taking a break for January, but we've got to cover a lot in 2023. There's the Persona game, Suikoden, Battle Network, Front Mission, Trails, and Tales of, and Like a Dragon, Ishin, are just a handful of games and series on my radar, so stay tuned, and until next time, thank you for watching.